It's devastating and it's, it kills the morale of your people when you're fighting for liberation and freedom and you're finally feeling it because you're finally on your land off the reserve and you're asserting your creator-given rights to your land and for the settler RCMP police force to come to you and read this to you and have the power to take you, handcuff you and bring you off to jail. And when you get out, you can't go back there or else you'll end up back in jail. It was traumatizing. You know, it was traumatizing to see the RCMP move in protecting money. They weren't protecting the people, they were protecting money and they were protecting industry. It was traumatizing to our people to see our, our, our leaders, our chiefs, being arrested and hauled off like criminals on our own land. Our land is unceded. We've never surrendered it. We've never lost it in a war. It's really unfair what Canada's doing to the Indigenous peoples. It just seems like there's, there's actually no way to contest the terms of the injunction. It really is like a, a weapon, a tool that's used to remove Indigenous people and uh, has been exercised in that way to get us out of the way by any sort of means necessary. They've, they've tried to criminalize us. They've tried to even, I'd say, weaponize us so they can, they can justify coming in at us with force. My experience with injunctions has been kind of a traumatizing one. I don't really have faith in the justice system. I don't have faith in the police, the RCMP. I, don't have faith in the government of Canada. Things haven't changed. I think it's important to note that when those Indigenous youth got arrested, they weren't read their rights. The injunction wasn't properly communicated to them and their physical safety was used as a bargaining chip. It was very clear that the target was Indigenous peoples. I really feel like these injunctions, they're like this, this recent injunction that we got for blocking this train, it's 30 days. They're really being weaponized against Indigenous peoples. You know, no matter what we do to raise our voices, to stand in solidarity, or to stand up for our communities, they will be criminalized. And that's what these injunctions are doing. Being able to put in place an enforcement order that includes the use of tactical teams and assault rifles and snipers and dogs and helicopters and snowmobiles. You know, take four people down who are standing in the way and allegedly breaching an injunction order. It tells me that this is, this is not just a, a sort of civil court matter. That it ha carries all of the force and all the violence of the state. Canadian government is absolutely not practicing free prior informed consent. They pick and choose which Indigenous peoples they will deal with in terms of getting consent. And most times these individuals are paid through government or through industry to be those people who are signing uh, consent when clearly they haven't even got consent from their own people. A lot of times I see band offices and band offices don't have the authority to give access to the land. The band office is much like a municipality where they only have jurisdiction within the, those within the, the, the reserve. So there's no free prior and informed consent. I just, you know, I, I hope that in the future that Canada will do a lot better. We know that we're not meant to be on these little Indian reserves. Like my father said, systemic impoverishment is one of the biggest human rights weapons that they have. It's easier to fight us when we're poor. And when we don't have no land, when we just have 0.2% of the land, which is the Indian reserves, we're going to remain poor. And that's the human rights weapon that the Canadian government has been dependent on and has used and executed against us. And now we're saying no more, we're, we're going to leave these Indian reserves. So now this weapon is injunctions and, and um, we're hoping that through our work and advocacy that our children aren't going to have to deal with the same reality of them using injunctions to remove us.
and we need people aware of this and advocating us for us very strongly on the outside because they want to criminalize us and throw us in jail. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of bad things going on from Canada on behalf of Canada to our people, but to see how our people are reacting to all these hurtful actions from Canada, to see how our people are persevering through the hurt and the pain and the genocide, that empowers me because it shows how strong we are.